Another favorite of mine is a carnivore's dilemma, treasured by Venetians, eschewed by tourists. Horse meat. There's only one butcher shop left in town that sells it. And that's where I meet up with Enrica Roca. She's renowned around the world as an authority on the subject of authentic Venetian cooking. And she knows pretty much everything about Venice's food history. When did the horse became popular? Was when the horses, you know, were going to war and they would drop dead on the battlefields uh, mm -hmm. and they had to eat them. So up, they picked them up and cooked them immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Food of necessity is what drove our, our culinary lives for thousands of years. Exactly. Italy is the largest consumer of horse meat in Europe, with most of the horses imported from Eastern Europe. In the old time, people were just plain hungry and had to eat. The recipe Enrica is cooking today is one born of necessity. So we're gonna cook it for two or three hours in red wine. They didn't have no refrigerators at the time, so they had to cook it in a way where right. they could keep it for a week. Right. He has all these different cuts from the horse. Absolutely. Filet, the shoulder, the ribs. The other specialty of the house is donkey salami. It's one of my favorite meats in the whole world. <laughs> yes. For, for a lot of people, horse and donkey is a, a big departure. It's mm -hmm. the deep end of the pool. But it's not, it's fairly shallow. I mean, it's, I mean this, is, this is great, great red meat. Very lean, very good for you. Both horse and donkey meat are rich in iron and actually became more popular recently because mad cow disease scared some folks away from beef. But Enrica has been cooking them for years in her classes and at home in her family's 250-year-old villa, now divided into 17 apartments. First, I think you're gonna do the rest. Well, you... I direct you. Enrica directs, and I handle the vegetables and seasonings. If the horse had been there, ungutted for a couple of days, you know, it might need a, a little bit more cloves and bay leaves and you know, <laughs> to, <laughs> to cover up the flavors. There's cheese and donkey salami before dinner. The hottest ingredient there is, is salami. Everyone's doing their own salami. It's beautifully cured. The cure flavor is not overwhelming. The fat, even though it's prevalent, eats really well. Our main dish is served in the garden. This is lean and just faintly, faintly gamey, except for the fact that it's so lean, you would think that this is beef. Absolutely. And I love the consistency. I love the, I love the mouth feel of the horse because it's not too rich. The idyllic setting and 500-year-old recipe transport you back in time until modern reality invades. When a boat of that size goes by, it kind of blows the cover. They cause a lot of damage. Yeah. They don't bring a lot of money, yep. Yep. except to the harbor. Yep. They create a lot of dirt. But Venetians like Enrica are bound and determined to keep the flame of their history, food traditions, and city alive. And knowing her spirit, it's in good hands. You were a doll. Millions of visitors pour into Venice each year. And of course, many restaurants cater to their tastes and preferences. But if you want to eat like Venetians, stop by a Bacari, little wine bars sitting along the canals and grab some small snacks, affectionately nicknamed Cicchetti. Each Bacari is famous for its own signature Cicchetti. Like these at the Ruga Rialto Bacari. Fresh sardines and scoop up a little bit of the onion, the pine nut, perch a raisin on top, and you have one incomparable little bite of food. A nice contrast with insalata di nervetti, an old Italian dish made from calves' feet tendons. Look at that quivering little fork full of cow tendons and gently pickled onions. This is a dish that used to be served all over this town. Now you only find it in a handful of tiny little bars like this one that will serve it. It's like eating a tub of lip gloss, maybe with a little more body to it. There are hundreds of Bakaris here, so the best way to find the hidden gems is to ask the guys working on the canals all day, the gondoliers. These guys are the rock stars of Venice. They go through years of training and apprenticeship and rigorous exams on navigation, water safety, and Venetian history. Massimo Letto has been a gondolier for 20 years, and of course, he has his favorite Bacari to show me. Massimo, 
You hungry? Devo mangiare? Dove la cicchetti? Ah, molto bene. Grazie, Massimo. Is this it? Yes. Fantastic. Cantina de Schiavi is on a small canal near a few museums and just across the way from the only gondola factory left in the city. The Italian version of tapas. It's run by Alessandra Gastaldi and her family. Yeah, go nuts. <laughs> this one is bacala mantecato, meltingly textured and with the intense sun-kissed flavor of dried cod. Salt cod, rehydrated, sometimes poached, shredded, and then mashed by hand with olive oil. Oh my God. <laughs> this is salty fish butter. It's incredible. Then, raw tuna covered with freshly grated bitter cacao. Tuna cacao? You like it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Everything I've had has got bitter, salty, sweet. Texture is gorgeous. Crispy crostini with those soft salads. Just delightful. You're a very talented lady. Very, very talented lady. <laughs> Massimo needs to get back to his gondola. At 100 bucks for a 30 minute gondola ride, he needs to start the meter running. Venice itself is a small city, but, but it's divided up into many teeny little neighborhoods, each with their own distinct personality. Last stop is Osteria La Cantina. The chef here is most famous for putting together his inspirational little plates of salume and pesce crudo and the shellfish. Whatever is best in the market that day winds up here. For chef and co-owner Francesco Zorzetto, it's all about freshness of the ingredients and the precision in the kitchen. Hand cutting paper thin slices of raw fish, salmon tartare in the middle, a tiny little cold poached quail egg. This is the way the locals eat, to savor the view as much as the wine and food. Let's go crayfish first. Mm. Wow. That's hardcore. The head fat and everything that's inside there just has that teensy, teensy little off flavor from all the sort of brains and guts that are in there. Nothing bad for you. Just briny and intense, and you can really taste the lagoon in here. It's just too good not to share. You've been eating too much meat and cheese over there. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. The best advice I can give anybody, wander through the back streets, get lost, find a place like this, and show your appreciation for the chefs who are keeping honest and authentic Venetian food traditions alive. <laughs> Spectacular. Grazie. Spectacular. Grazie mille. Oh my Grazie. God. I love this town. <laughs>